Tonight, we are playing, I, t I decided, since we're playing a game on Christmas Eve, we gotta play something Christmas themed. Yeah. So we are playing Home Alone Game yeah. by uh, Pros Prospero Hall, the, uh, the, the game development company that has since been purchased by Funko hmm. and uh, makes, they, they're just really good at making licensed games. Uh, they they come up with innovative mechanics that make things feel thematic and feel like the the property that you're that you're playing in. I love that the cards, and I know we'll get to them, but they yeah. look like knitted sweaters. Yeah, I know. Everything so in cool. this game is like all the artwork is knit. Yeah, like knit ugly Christmas feels, sweater. Yeah, it's great. Look. So this is a very simple game. This this is. Uh, it's designed, the rule book recommends that the first time you play it, you play it one-on-one. -on -one. We're not gonna do that, obviously. We got three of us, so uh -huh. we're gonna have two people play the roles of the wet bandits. As it should be. Yeah, exactly. Um, it is playable two to four players. In any case, one player t plays the role of Kevin McAllister. Everybody else uh, collectively acts on behalf of the wet bandits. And nobody plays the family. No. The wet bandit players are uh, in a, in a two-player game where there's only one wet bandit. Uh, they're trying to steal $2,000 worth of stuff from the McAllister house. Since there's two wet bandit players tonight, we're gonna be trying to steal $2,200 worth of stuff. The way that this works is, uh, it's, I'll go over the, the two-player game rules and then we'll, we'll talk briefly about how things are different since there's two wet bandit players. Uh, so, normally, We'll shuffle up each individual deck of cards. There's the Wet Bandit deck, the Kevin deck, and the Loot deck. Uh, shuffle up each deck independently, and each player will draw six cards from their respective hand, and then Kevin will reveal three, the top three cards from the Loot deck for everybody to see. Everybody gets to see what the three Loot cards are that are up for grabs that round but then Kevin will get to take a look at these uh, cards and some of them will have special text. Like this one says, this is, it's worth $0 by itself, but if you also get the key, uh, it's they're the, together the pair is worth $600. Yeah. And this cash, uh, the bandits can discard this to basically buy three cards from their discard pile back. Okay. Um, but anyway, so, We'll all get to see which three loot cards are up for grabs at the start of the round, but then Kevin will pick these up and secretly place one of them in each one of the three locations in the house, mm. face down. So the bandit player will the bandit players will know what's available in the house. Just they won't where. know where it is specifically. Okay. Then we move on to the Kevin phase, where Kevin will take those six cards from his hand and choose any number of them to play to these three locations in the house, a maximum of three cards per location. Why don't you go ahead and lay something face up just so we can see some iconography. That's a perfect one for demonstration. Some of these cards are gonna have some special ability text, which you see there. Uh, we'll talk about that stuff as it comes up. Uh, some of them are decoys. So the way when these cards get played, uh, and you don't have to play all the cards that are in your hand. Mm. Uh, by the way, core mechanic of this game: no cards are ever reshuffled to reform a, a draw pile. Mm. Okay. So it's it's a card management game for uh, both sides. So when you're out, you're out. Because once you're out of cards, you can't do anything to okay. to stop the other side. Yeah. If you're Kevin or if you're the bandits, you can't do anything to keep stealing stuff. But when you play these cards, again, you can play any number to each location. Maybe you don't think that loot's worth protecting. Maybe you're trying to bluff and pretend like this one's better. Uh, when you play stuff, you'll play it face down. So the bandit player will only know that you've played cards. They won't know what those cards look like. Mm. Uh, once Kevin has played those cards, again, it's up to three per location from the six that are in his hand. Uh, then the bandit player will uh, decide using their cards, they're gonna decide which one of these three locations they want to try to break into first. Uh, if they're trying to go in through the front door, there, so there's a break-in cost on each one of these tiles. Mm. This icon, the mitten, means you gotta discard that many cards from your hand. So you got six to start the round, you already have to burn one Damn. to break into the front door. If you wanna go into the downstairs window, 
that is either discard one from your hand or discard the top card from the draw pile. Mm. And in the upstairs window, you have to discard both a card from your hand and another one either from your hand or from the draw pile. That's the break-in cost to get in through that location. Once you go in, if there's nothing there, you simply claim that loot. That's yours. So you'll put that uh, any loot that you collect in your collected loot stash again in a two-player game once the bandit player gets to $2,000. They win. Game's over. If there are cards, Kevin cards, stacked up in that location, you're going to reveal the first one. Now, there's iconography on this card that we got to pay attention to. The first thing is the paint can. That's an extra special thing that says that Kevin's trying to hit the bandit in the head with a paint can. So, as Michael was just uh, figuring out there, there's a paint can die Blue. that Kevin will then roll. Go ahead and give it a roll, see what happens. Do you want to roll it in here? No, just roll okay. it on the table. Perfect. So, if it's blank... Miss. Nothing happens. Game can, or Gameplay continues. But if it's on one of these colored paint can faces, then immediately the bandit player has to look through their hand and find a card that has a matching colored Christmas light bulb. And that card has to be discarded. You really don't want to discard twofers if you don't have to, because those are going to give you some versatility and, and stuff uh, later on. So... Hopefully you've got a single green Christmas light if that happens, and if you don't, you gotta get rid of one of these. If uh, you don't have a matching Christmas light, you have to show your hand to Kevin so that he knows that you're not cheating. Also, he knows what's in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, then, uh, and then play continues. The next step to resolve on a trap card like this one, there's then a Christmas light. That is the cost to disarm that trap. So then the bandit player would then have to discard matching Christmas light mm. from their hand in order to disarm the trap. If they don't have that or they don't want to spend it, they can instead pay the penalty cost, Oof, steep. very steep, uh, to just power through that trap. Or if they don't have that or they don't want to, they can decide, you know what? This is too rich for my blood. I'm not going in through the front door <laughs> this round. Uh, you can always back out of a location, but you can't go back in through that location again the same round. Mm. You can break into all three of these if you've got the cards to do it. You probably won't. Uh, so that's, uh, that's those trap cards. Once you've resolved one, you then get to decide if you want to resolve the next one. Resolve that. Once you've done that, you get to claim the loot. Uh, if you come across a decoy, those are freebies. The bandit just gets to cruise right past that. Oh. That is just a ploy that Kevin is putting down to make it look like he's setting a trap there. Okay. There are some special bandit action cards like that one. I think those will all be. <laughs> I think those will all be pretty self-explanatory when we come across them. And then uh, at the end of the round, when the bandit player is either out of cards or done trying to break in through anything that's there, uh, then everything that is left, let's say that uh, the bandit player never went in through the upstairs window mm -hmm. here, they just went in here, then everything that's left gets discarded with its current face. Like, just keep everything face down that is face down so that the bandit player doesn't know what cards mm. Kevin burned that round. Uh, so everything gets discarded, and then we draw back up to our hand size limit and start the next round. Since there's two Wet Bandit players, slight difference, we're going to draw four cards each okay. instead of six cards individually. Again, we're trying to get to $2,200 instead of 2,000. And uh, on our turn, we get to choose which order we try to break into the house. We do have to act independently, mm -hmm. but we can show each other our cards okay. and formulate a plan based on that. Got it. Uh, I think that's uh, that's basically the gist. If uh, if the Wet Bandit player runs out of cards, game's over, Kevin wins, because they're not going to be able to steal anything at that point. If the loot deck runs out of cards, we will finish the current round, and if the bandits still haven't hit their target, the cops show up and arrest them. Kevin wins the game. 
That's the gist. And if Sweet. I run out, I lose. If Kevin runs out of cards, we keep playing, but there won't be anything for Kevin to, to stop. do to stop the bandits from stealing stuff. So as long as the bandits still have enough cards to pay break-in costs, Got it. they'll be able to most likely steal enough loot. Hey, thanks for checking out BNB Tabletop, the home of the board and barrel. A live show every Sunday night at 5 p.m. Pacific where me and my buddies play board games. If you haven't seen it, you're missing out. We like to keep things interactive with our buff and nerf house rules that allow you to influence the course of the game and virtual bingo cards that could win you a free board game of your own. So do us a favor, do yourself a favor. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and ding that notification bell. Thanks again for stopping by. We'll see you Sunday night.